Hello there. My name is Kate McCampbell, and I will be defending the claim that the insect Alphys glycines, also known as the soybean aphid, is a larger influence of destruction than the sugarcane aphid. Howdy, my name is Alicia, and I'll be defending the claim that the insect Melophis sicari, also known as, also known as a sugar cane aphid, causes a greater damage damage in, uh, in agriculture than the soybean aphid. The topic which is being discussed throughout our debate is which of the previously mentioned insects causes a greater magnitude of destruction when it comes to the damages and losses that can be observed in agriculture. Soybean aphids are little bitty creatures that are about 1 16th of an inch. Without looking at these little guys under a microscope, it is quite arduous to tell which specified species of aphid this particular insect falls under. This unfortunate and annihilative little species woefully made its way into North America from Asia and has caused unfathomable de destruction ever since. In order to identify these little critters, one will notice that they are yellow in color and have minute black cornicles on their behind, which are tubes utilized for secreting uh, for secreting defensive substances and pheromones. More likely than not, this order of insect is found in massive fields of soybean plants. Simply from hearing their common name, one may easily assume this fact. When it comes to their life cycle, the soybean aphids lay their eggs on a shrub known as buckthorn, and they stay there all throughout winter. Come springtime, the little eggs proceed with their next segment of life and become little wingless insects. Interestingly, they don't make their way to the soybean plants until they are in their third stage of life and have developed wings. The way in which they are capable of destroying these favorable plants is by utilizing their needle-like mouths to suck the sap out of the plant. <clears throat> It is practically abnormal to witness thousands of itty bitty insects completely cover the leaves and switch to the undersides once they have produced a thorough amount of damage on the first side. These poor leaves become discolored and even discon discontinue to grow when these awful little bugs come in big groups. The way in which they colonize together all together to inhabit such plants is quite instinctive, yet saddening to us as humans. Farmers work day and night to be sure that they are producing the highest yielding beans as possible. And with contribution to these little guys, their hope is lost. With high potential of diseased vegetation, there's no way for farmers to ensure that they will receive their maximum amount of income. And that is something that they rely on to live. Yes, these plants might be affected with harmful obstacles, but those who spend their days fighting to protect them pay a higher price when it comes to the termination of their soybeans plants lives. <clears throat> the sugarcane aphid is one of the key, pe key pests in sorghums and, and sugarcane. Its earliest known study has been in South Africa, India, and Japan, and now one of the most important insects pests um, are in the southern uh, United States and in Mexico. It was first discovered in the United States in 2013, and now it has become a major problem in sorghum production in North America. Sugarcane aphids can be winged or winglet or wingless. The wingless aphids are pale yellow to white, while the winged are a dark yellow. Winged adult aphids gain their wings as a result of stressful conditions. Some will develop their wings in order to fly and search for nearby food. Both the winged and wingless are asexual and most are female. Female aphids give birth to one to, one to three offsprings daily. <clears throat> These are to reach their adult stage and reproduce in five days. The, the typical lifespan for sugarcane aphids range around 10 to 27 days. Sugarcane aphids have mouth parts in order to pierce and suck into the, into the sap of plants. They hang out under the sorghum leaves and leave behind a sticky liquid called honeydew. The honeydew serves as a fungu fungus which will eventually lead to the reducing of reducing the plant's ability to photosynthesize. As the population of, sh of sugar aphids increase, they begin, they begin to remove nutrients from sorghum 
plants, negatively affecting their plant growth. This can lead to many issues such as increased stock um, lodging, loss of yield, and spring infestation. Sugarcane aphids scouting should be done frequently throughout the week to ensure that they are not harming the plants. One, one can notice honeydew on the side of the leaves and should take action if, they are, if there are aphids on 25% or more on the leaf. The damage left by the sugarcane aphids can hurt the farmers economy economically, if not treated and scouted early on. I acknowledge that the sugarcane aphid is detrimental to society and the sorghum and sugarcane that it destroys. However, there are proven statistics that manifest how minor this little pest truly is throughout the world. The damage that these little creatures generate, generate can be reduced even more with the correct treatments. Currently, there are hybrid in insecticides in the works that should place a major drawback to the amount of damage that the sugarcane aphids initiate. It is also crucial that those who grow grain or sorghum go about their fields every two weeks and do checks so that if these intrusive little insects come into play, they can be caught at an early time. Once the aphids are spotted, it is fairly easy to address the issue if you have the correct insecticides on hand. It is actually quite intriguing to see just when one must begin treating their vegetation. If there are 50 or more aphids scattered per leaf, it is urgent that they're treated, treated with the adequate insecticide within four days of the spotting. If these steps are followed, there should be little to no problem with keeping the field in a thriving state. It's easy to understand that the impact of the soybean aphid is not favorable to agriculture and can, and can harm the income of the farmers. However, the the Destruction of agriculture can be prevented if good management and control is being provided. Early treatment of the soybean aphid can lead to less reproduction of the aphids. Control and prevention can be done to get rid of the aphids. Some examples are spraying cold water on the leaves. Um, horticulture oil are also effective, soapy water um, and when plants are not blooming. To prevent the aphids, beneficial insects um, that feed on the aphids can be introduced, such as ladybugs, companion planting can also be helpful. Unlike the sugarcane aphids, which yes, can, can be prevented and controlled, take more work for the farmers. Scouting early for them can take so much time and many of the insecticides can be harmful to the surrounding plants and to the beneficial insecticides, causing an increase in the aphid population. I can see where you are coming from when it comes to the treatment of these imposing and multiplying insects. However, the same goes for the sugarcane aph aphid. It is apparent that treatment can cause a great reduction in the number of aphids present if the problem is caught at the earliest time. The extent to how abysmal these critters truly are is long. To say the least, if the fields are infested and left without treatment, they will cause $2.4 billion of yield reduction each year. Numbers speak volumes, and this analytical data shows just how catastrophic and ruinous these species truly is throughout the world. I understand that a great amount of money would be lost if fields are left untreated, but the sugarcane aphids in a damage in Texas agriculture is out of control and is causing a great economic loss. The average direct economic loss in Texas from 2014 to 2016 is just uh, 7857. This economic loss in Texas alone affects so many of the farmers and even us. In 2016 alone, 34 percent of farmers had severe case, cases of sugar and aphids ruining plants and crops. You make some great points. There has been and will continue to be ongoing research on the soybean aphid. There's so much to discover when it comes to better management techniques and the ways in which we may be able to control how much of their existence perseveres throughout society. It is critical for us as humans to take initiative and observe which other organisms may act as predators towards these particular aphids and see how they may they may be serve us in keeping their population under control. There's even research being done by several universities permitting us to see just how quickly the soybean aphids go from being miniature wingless insects on the buckthorn shrub to going straight to the soybean. Overall, there will continue to be research on the ways in which new prevention and control methods to efficiently regulate these aphids. It does become hard to argue which aphid ha has a great 
destruction impact on agriculture when when both of the soybean and the sugar cane aphids have such negative effect on crops. I agree that there that there is much more research that needs to be done to control and manage the population of aphids and and more preventive measures to ensure that nothing is hurting plant growth. It is important to to study the impact of aphids or any insects that have on agriculture because it affects environment, nature, and humans as well. I believe that this will be an uh, this will be an ongoing research project, and there might be more in other insects that have a bigger negative impact on agriculture. Thank you. Thank you for listening, and we hope you learned something new.